Hi, everybody. It's Brooke and Laura here for legal. Oh, sorry. <laughs> Wrong stream that we do. Lawyering outside the lines. Uh, we do two talks on Tuesdays and one for our Arkansas consumers and one for you all. And I um, didn't do the one today. Brooke did it solo for our consumers. And apparently I just wanted to she really wanted to do it. She really wanted to do it. <laughs> so welcome to Lawyering Outside the Lines this Tuesday. Uh, last week, we talked about setting intentions and not resolutions for the new year. We kind of want to continue that theme largely because of what happened in our country last week. We're not talking politics today, just the law and how to kind of work with our intentions and control our own anxieties. I know Brooke, myself, and many of our friends, both in the legal world and not, felt all sorts of emotions while watching the live streams of people breaking into the Capitol building in DC, causing destruction, chaos, and even death. Some of these feelings I personally felt were helplessness, hopelessness, worry, fear, anger, grief, and that's just naming a few. I think we all had, or most of us, I shouldn't speak for everyone, but I at least had a myriad of emotions that really kind of lasted the entire day and the entire week and are still happening right now. So let's just take a step back out of our emotions and let's talk about two intentions that we can focus on right now. Right, so um, that's really important. So this is a really important topic to us. Um, the first thing is what is in our control and what is not. So worrying about things that you can't control are draining. It's just gonna drain you um, and the mental strength you need to be at your best. So it can also lead to other toxic habits and behaviors like blaming yourself, mistreating staff even, uh, getting so entrenched in worry that you become less and less productive in your everyday life. Um, you know, in this past week, Laura and I have seen colleagues who, you know, are worrying about the public perceptions of the rule of law being false or fake. Uh, they worry about jury pools, uh, the do-it-yourself potential client, having their experience and knowledge second-guessed at every turn. And these are things that we cannot control. They're external factors and external circumstances. So how can we try to get back to focusing on the things that we actually can control? Um, well, we know the law. So if we don't know specific things off the top of our head, we know how to research, find and interpret those laws. And that's a really valuable tool that not everyone has. So, uh, you know, I'm really grateful for that knowledge and that experience. So we have the ability to reason through facts and situations to foresee minimal, many possible outcomes. We have literally gone to school to train our brain to do these things. So, you know, that's a double edged sword and trying to focus on things we can't control uh, because sometimes we just want to control all the things. Also, depending on our personality types, and most of us lawyers have a little bit of an A in there, a little bit of A type personality. So, um, one of the most interesting ideas to keep our minds on things that we can control in the present is to keep a worry box or schedule a specific time to sit with your worries. Um, you know, we like the idea of both. So possibly scheduling maybe 15 minutes a day or an hour a week or whatever to kind of write down and release the things that are beyond our control and about which we feel kind of a visceral reaction of worry or anxiety or whatever emotions specific to you. Just write those down, set them aside and maybe come back to them at a later time, whether that's, you know, later in that week and then review last week's worries, the next, you know, whatever works for you. You could also keep a notepad or a journal open on your computer, or on your desk, so that when that feeling of kind of lost control pops into your mind, you can write it down to kind of get it out there. So it's all about kind of getting it outside of your body and onto some paper. So you've kind of, um, you know, done some sort of physical act to remove that um, from affecting you physically, mentally, whatever. So some other things that you can do during this time of uncertainty, you can stay away from social media, or I mean, a lot of us don't uh, for business purposes, other purposes, we're stuck at home because of COVID, whatever. Um, but you can at least limit the amount of time that you spend and maybe the types of things you see. I've unfollowed a lot of things. Um, I've been very intentional about how I use social media and you know the people that I am interacting with because it's still it's still your energy. You still want to protect your energy. Um, and I, also, as far as uh, you know, television. I have realized I, yesterday I've been on news station since last Wednesday, <laughs> and I was like, I really should probably. I was like, why, why am I having headaches and anxiety? And I probably shouldn't be watching this all the time. So um, you know, it goes 
true for that as well. And then also stop trying to guess what's in someone else's mind. That is just super dangerous. So I know for some of us, you know, that's in our job description, but at least be aware that it's it's really an impossible task um, because there's all sorts of things that come off of that. If we are trying to, you know, guess at what's in somebody's mind, guess their even motivations, their actions, their behaviors, uh, one, it is, it is truly impossible to know exactly, um, no matter how good you are at reading people, but also you may be creating other stresses and other anxieties that aren't even there. They're not even real because your perception of the situation um, has led you or your experiences have led you to determine that so-and-so thinks X, Y, Z, and that might not be the case at all. Um, you can also exercise that helps me. I go turn my brain off and exercise for an hour in the mornings, um, which is really nice. So anything that can help you turn your brain off. Also talk to your friends or family about your feelings. So, you know, sometimes letting things out into the light can help take away their importance. So not only letting them out journaling or, you know, whatever you're doing physically to remove that from your body, but, you know, find the people who you feel safe. You don't have to blab to everybody, but, you know, find the people who are your people and you feel safe um, sharing these things with that you can go and have conversations to let them know your concerns and worries. And, um, you know, possibly they can help you, you know, mitigate some of that or, you know, at least just be there to be a support system. Yeah. And I'll throw just one more thing in about the exercise. <clears throat> I'm not as much of an exercise person as Brooke is, but one of the things that I've done in the past and that I have started doing um, the last several months is taking a walk with my dog when oftentimes at a specific time of the day that I can feel overwhelmed or I'm feeling like, you know, maybe something's beyond my control. I just shut down my computer, I get outside and I take a little time. That sometimes gives me a chance to think about things or it gives me a chance to listen to a podcast or something like that so that I'm not focusing on whatever it is that's, that's messing with my brain uh, back at home. So, uh, so that's just another option um, is, you know, if you're not a big exercise person um, with a, you know, with, with a regular, regularly scheduled option, then just taking the time to get out, exercise, take a walk, uh, whatever it might be in order to clear your mind. I know Brooke does that too. Uh, she takes walks, she has a nice little pond over by her house. So she takes walks outside and, and uh, you know, just separates herself from whatever it is that is causing that anxiety, that worry, um, that loss of control feeling. So the second thing we're gonna talk about is the word presence. And there are a few different definitions of the word presence. And there's a reason that I say presence and not present. Um, one definition of the word presence is the fact or condition of being present. So the word present is involved with the definition of presence. That's one definition. Um, another option is that, you know, that something that is one, you know, a person or something that is present, such as the actual person or thing that is present of a visible or concrete nature. Or another option is the bearing or carriage or air of a person. All of these things have one major thing in common and to go to another definition of the word, time. Time is the, is the thing that is common in all of these definitions. Presence is in the now, it's current. It's happening in your immediate vicinity. So present is a part of presence, but it's also so much more. We, do, you know, we don't know what's happening, uh, what's going to happen in the future and we can't change what has happened in the past. So trying to focus on the present moment and your presence in that moment really can help with anxiety, worry, and unrest that you know that many of us are feeling right now and maybe do all the time like me. <laughs> it's been kind of most of my life that I've worried about what I did or worried about what I'm gonna do. And you know, that's been a struggle for me that I've worked on really hard for the past, really especially five years. Uh, I've been on kind of a journey of mental health and physical health because of a, an illness diagnosis that caused me to realize how much anxiety I carry all the time. So focusing on what is happening in your present moment really can affect how you feel and how you function, basically. Mindfulness is based on this principle. We hear that word a lot. Um, I think th those of us who listen to podcasts or read books about about um, improving our mental health. Mindfulness is a big word that, uh, that we hear all the time. And there are exercises that you can look up and follow to see what works best for you in order to narrow your focus on the now. I think it's special, especially it's important in situations where you're feeling that anxiety build up or feeling like 
there you've, you're losing control. Focus on the now. You can do things like breathe, meditate, slow down. This is a big one that I don't do very well is move slower, talk slower, eat slower. By doing these, the, your actions, your regular everyday actions in a slower you know, uh, speed, at a slower speed, you do become more aware of what is happening around you. You can also consciously use your, your senses to see, hear, smell, and taste your immediate surroundings. So maybe in a time of you know, anxiety, sit still and name three things, either out loud or in your head that you can see. One thing that you can hear, two things that you can smell, and that forces you to kind of focus on what's happening right now in your physical vicinity, as opposed to thinking about all the things that could go wrong with jury pools or you know a case next week or whatever it might be. I'm not saying it's perfect and you're gonna do it all the time, but there are ways that you can do it to help alleviate these kinds of stresses in, um, in a specific moment. Finally, let's talk about your presence or your persona. You cannot control what others think of you. It's kind of like what Brooke said about uh, you can't control, you, you can't guess what people are thinking. And it's something that we both said in the past too, is that you know, you're not responsible for other people and you can't control what they think of you. You can only control how you put yourself out in the world and what you do. Whether that's as simple as putting on a great shade of lipstick or a new suit or blouse um, or, you know, a shirt, like <laughs> I, I, I talk in kind of the women's aspect of things, but it could be anything. Or, you know, working on your confidence. These things can help you help how you feel about yourself. And therefore they're gonna help with your projection of yourself. Sometimes the little things like that make really all the difference about feeling how you put yourself out in the world and being more present in the now. Yeah, so those two things are really important. And um, that's kind of our little escape, how we've um, come to in our you know mindfulness and wellness journey, uh, kind of wrap things up, what we can control, what we can't control, if you distinguish those, um, and then you focus on what you can control, that is extremely helpful and also making sure um, that there's presence about you. So thank you so much for listening to us share today. Uh, please comment here, reach out to you know one of us, share within your own community, but do not bottle it up. Uh, remember, we only have control over our own actions and our reactions and you know, work hard to be really aware of our presence and present world is that's something that is actually in our control. So thanks for joining us so much. Hope you all have a great week. We're here next week again at uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, 12 Central, 11 Mountain and 10 Pacific for some more lawyering outside the lines. Have a great week.